Hey guys, welcome to the wizard study one year challenge. It's a challenge for me. Um, challenge myself to do one premiere video a week for a year on one specific um, subject. So this subject is going to be the wizard study for this year. And what that means is every week I'm going to put out a video like this one where I'm making something for the wizard study. A wizard study would be like a library that he works in with where he keeps all his magical items and gadgets and doohickeys. And well, this first episode has to be the designing of the study room, right? Because you can't put something in a study if you don't have a study. These, these will be airing every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern from March 11th for one full year. I'm going for realism. I did a contest a few months back for CG Boost. It was called Magic Book, and that really got me interested in doing something like this. Um, I decided to make it something I can share. So this will be episode one of that. And the image you see on the screen now is the image from that contest. I didn't win. Bummer. I didn't even get it mentioned. But no hard feelings. Um, I used, I usually do realism. Um, let's get started. Get rid of everything. And we're going to start off with the cylinder. The cylinder is going to be eight sided. I don't want a round room. I don't want a square room. So eight. The radius is going to be roughly a 30 foot diameter. It's a big room, you know, it's got to have a lot of stuff. So we're going to type in 30 feet. And the height of the room is going to be roughly around 12 feet. All right. So there it is. We're going to move that up in Z. I'm going to just move it approximately. And GZ. Zoom in. I'm going to adjust this to be exact in a second. Sorry. Let's see. My premiere videos, they're going to be time lapsed. RZ 22.5. That's what the rotation is. Yeah, it looks right. And we're going to apply those changes, transformations, and rotations, and all that good stuff. We're going to tab into this. We're going to take this top off. We're going to um, quarter this room. What I mean by that is we're going to quarter it like that. And then I'm going to take that to there. We're going to join it must not click let's let's do it this way i right, connect this dot to this dot and then you hit the j button to join it so it splits in half and then we're gonna go the other way as well split that in half um to set up this room i'm just gonna do one quarter of it that way i don't have to do everything multiple times so here's the corner of the room. I guess they're all corners, right? It's got eight sides. So this, we're going to put a window uh, in the middle of these side ones. So let's do a, let's do a, a mirror modifier. This will help me do the inset. I'm just gonna throw that up there. And then I'm going to add that to it. I guess we'll do it this way. I'm going to do three loop cuts. Move them up towards the top. So if I'm standing near a window, a window is going to be just higher than a desk. Um, so a desk is roughly 32 inches. 
let's say another six above that because we have a thick windowsill. So this bottom here, let's move this stuff over too so we get more room. So my bottom Z is going to be roughly 32, let's go another six, so 40 inches. And then we want what do you think? Three foot window? I'm gonna get rid of this get rid of this middle one here. We're gonna dissolve that edge. This one will be roughly four foot higher than forty inches. Or th three foot higher than forty inches. So thirty-six feet seventy-six inches. Remember this is a tall room and it's a big room, so I probably should put a person in here as a reference height. Um So let's put that window right in the middle so we get... Oh yeah, that's a, that is a long wall, isn't it? What about two? Let's do them out here like this. I'm just going to eyeball this. It doesn't have to be exact uh, width of a window. But we're going to make them the same. So one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here. Um, to get this window here, the same spot, and then go ahead and delete those faces. I'm gonna delete this face, so I don't need that one. We're actually gonna go ahead and get rid of that mirror modifier for now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that should be about right. But I wanna take this window and put it over here. So if I shift D, drop it, rotate Z, negative 90, and then I take my cursor, drop it there, do a shift S, cursor to selected, then I pick these again. Then we're going to do a rotate Z 180. And it's in position. Now, the one problem we're going to have is these things aren't connected. So I'm going to do an A, vertex, right mouse click, merge by distance, merge by distance. So I got those all merged in. We need to look at our uh, face orientation. Um, typically, that is the outside. And this is the inside of the room, but you want this to be the inside. So I need my headphones come up. But, um, I'm just gonna select all these since there's not that many. I am going to F3 flip normals and make everything inside blue. So when we go to extrude along normals, we're going to go outward. So I'll E, extrude along normals, this way, 0.46, negative, select all, right, uh, F3, because it should already be there, flip normals, okay, then this, we'll just fix this. Doesn't really matter though. We're not worried about the outside, we just want the inside. All right, since we're not worried about it, let's turn those off. face orientation. Let's go ahead and give this two textures to start with. And the reason I say two is because we got a floor and walls and they're on the same block. So plus plus. First one. Love polygon by the way. Alright. So now I have my textures. We're going to look for bricks. What kind of bricks do we want? Let's just go ahead and throw these old bricks in for now. Um, load and apply material. Ba doom! And of course, they're going to be big. Okay, so our second one, we're going to go with concrete. I know they didn't have concrete, but that's how the floor probably would have looked. Um, 
No, I have some. So we got concrete polished, another polished, another polished, concrete wall. I thought I had concrete that wasn't, oh, there it is. We're going to load and play that. Okay, so we're going to select the floor. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Polygon, I suggest you look at it. Um, I don't know if there's anything terrible out there. It's not just their tech. They have this really cool um, thing right here. Go back down to it. It's called the Polygon Material Converter. Now, if you get materials from some places, you got to apply your normals, your bump maps, and all that stuff. Now, with this thing, it knows what that texture should be, and it sets it all up for me. I mean, they're really in depth too, so I mean, I, I'm not even going to begin to understand a lot of this. Um, and I don't need to. Not really. Um, because they did it all for me. And this is the, the wall pit texture, and there's the horrible floor laying on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, we're going to select our faces. You know, I bet if I hit C, that'd be easier to just go like this. I don't care if I get the top, sides, and sides of windows. Um, even the floor, I don't even care. For, you know, matter of fact, let's just hit A. A for all. Um, if I un unwrap that, it looks horrible. So before I unwrap it, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this surface here and I'm gonna do I want to do that yet this is the line well, I'll go ahead and do it for now I'm going to um, mark sharp or mark scene that's the edge loop to do that select it with this phrase go in here marks it and then I want to Go across there, down there, and hit control and click over here, and then up here. So I want all of that to be one face. Let's see what the window stills do. Oops, I hit, I was holding control. So I want to do a, a shift, alt, click here. I thought I would have done a loop cut. Nope. I don't want that. Shift and click. Let's undo that back one. Right mouse click. Mark scene. It's kind of like unfolding a box. I've heard that one. Analogy. Wherever you want that box to come apart is where you're marking. So if you have a loop, it can't all be one piece of cardboard because it's got to come from a flat sheet. So one of the corners you have to mark as a seam so the rest can flip out. So I don't, I'm not too worried about everything in the background. Um, I'll eventually have to do the inside of the windows, but right now I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to do an A. I did mark the seam, yeah. Okay, good. A, UV unwrap. And you'll see this is all... All this stuff over here, hit L. All this stuff over here is the back stuff. That's the stuff that's in the back. This stuff, this one here, L. That's the floor. And then this here is the wall. But see now your your texture looks better. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, click off that, and then hit L over this. R90, so the, the board is the right way, and then I'm going to scale that bad boy up to get a look. Now this may not be the final texture, but it's going to be something to start with. And for the floor, we're going to um, grab the face command, grab that, and then we're going to come up here and assign second material to it. And then we're going to come over here. L. I'm gonna 
See how it's kind of like warped looking? Like, that's not how that looks. Why does it look like that over there? I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a UV unwrap again. I'm gonna scale that up because these are repeatable patterns. From up here, you can see it, but when we put stuff on the floor, it won't matter. So let's zoom in on that. Check it out. All right. We're gonna put some rugs down. We're gonna we're gonna cover the floor mostly. The lighting's gonna be dungeony candles and there'll be some grudge maybe grunge not grudge grunge some uh, concrete window sills we'll take our time on this i'll probably work on this over the next few days i'll record different segments and when we're watching the premiere they'll be edited with time lapses so but afterwards you can watch me explain what i'm working on all right, so let's tab out of that. Let's look at this from the top view. All right, let's see what it looks like with a mirror modifier on it. So, by mirror. See, this is not the desired look of the floor. Well, at the very end, we'll. When we get the room done, we'll redo the floor. But let's go ahead and hide that. Alright, so one of the things I want to do is I want to put a wood beam in these corners. So it kind of breaks up the blending of the pattern. So let's go to the top. And shift A, mesh, cube. Where are you, cube? Bring you over here like this. Then we're going to scale you gonna oh everything's still based on the cursor scale you down move it a lot of the stuff we're gonna do is gonna be approximate um right. let's see should I make that square like this See, in the end, it's really, it's really not, have to, it doesn't have to be functional in real life. It just has to be look aesthetically pleasing. So we got that. So let's take this. We're going to add material to that. And I'm thinking an old, an old wood. We got some good old wood. Um, go ahead and go with. Um, planks floor, load it, buy it. Um, now, nice thing about this being square, I'm going to apply these transformations that I did to them. Should always do that before you um, unwrap. So I'm going to tab into that and go the UV cube projection. And here it is. Press X. Bring it in. Stretch that board out. Get it onto one board. You don't want to really get that dark shadow. G X. So you get in the dark shadow, then it's going to look like there's a gap on the corners. Hey, that looks pretty good, right? Oh, I gotta fix this. Take both those. G. See, there's a dark darkness on here. Pick that face.
that point. See, I thought when I picked the edge, I picked the whole edge. You only pick one point. You get the straight line out. All right, so see this corner is really sharp. Let's get rid of that sharpness by clicking on it and doing a control B. We're gonna put one break in it. That gives it a less sharp look. I think that works. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna do shift D, copy it, drop it back down, we're gonna rotate about the Z. And we're gonna go 45 degrees, negative. There it is. The top of this wall will probably still be there. Maybe there'll be some wood up there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into here. I am going to grab all of these top pieces. Like so. Shift D on those. So create mouse to snap them back. Create mouse again to separate. Selection. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and hide that wall. I'm going to click on the wall first and then hide it. So now I have this guy here. I'm going to click that. I'm going to shift click this guy here. We're going to do a control L. We're going to say materials. Basically what I did is I just copied the materials over to that other object from the second object I selected. So we're going to click that. I'm going to tab into it, do it all, and do extrude, Z, and let's make that board roughly about there. I'm going to grab this front, well first we're going to do is we'll get rid of these window sill, window ice, iso parms is what they're called in CAD. Dissolve edges. Alright, so we get rid of those edges. Now let's grab the front face. We're going to do an Alt-E along normals, bring it in. We have that overhang the top there. Then we'll get rid of these edges down here, so all the edges. With a big project like this, the least amount of edges, uh, most likely the better. So, now I have all this. And look, I already have this as a seam. But we're going to mark these ones as seams too. Not sharp. Like so. I'm not going to mark that as a seam because later I'm going to. I would like to take these off though. Because when I mirror it, I'm going to have to do that with the walls too. Take off those so when you mirror, you don't have two faces on top of each other in there. Alright, so now let's. Uh, oh. UV unwrap. Alright, so I'm going to take this face here. Where is it at? I'm going to do an L R 90 G for grab. And then grab that point, this point. G X. I'm going to grab this face. That face is already vertical. Nice. L, G. I'm going to grab that point. G, X. I'm going to grab this one. L, G. G, X. Alright. So. We will see these bottom surfaces. So let's go ahead and grab those, grab the top ones while we're at it. We're gonna right mouse click and do a mark. I gotta switch over the edges, mark, seam. We're gonna grab all except for these three, because I've already moved them. We're gonna do a UV unwrap. Okay, so. Since we're going to see a bottom edge of this, we're going to grab these ones. Grab this one here, L, G, 
energy. Let's do a good corner of this crummy. Up. The G. Let's control Z a bit. The um G and the H are close to each other. Keep bumping the H. Alright, so that. That over there. Go to that point. You come over. It over. Chix. G. X. Alright. So, basically, all the ones that you see from human. Visual height are all done. Now, one thing is in real life, and especially after a long time, this crack would have a gap. There, it, w it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be awesome and tight like that. So, let's uh, grab this edge, do a control B. And it will come out like this. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll just remove this. We'll go delete faces. Let's grab that one, delete face. And then I'm going to click on this one and say fill, fill. Now I'm just going to unwrap these. I'm not going to worry about where they go too much because this is all going to be dark shaded and it's going to be very small in the whole picture. But I do need a UV unwrap it because it has a weird texture to it. Alright, let's do that again over here. Grab it, roll B. Nice. And then we're going to grab that. That. Delete it. Delete. Face. And then we're going to do a fill on these again. FF. Auto fill. Then I'm going to come in here and grab, grab. I don't know what I did there. UV unwrap. Awesome. Now, one of the problems we're going to have is this little intersection here. So. Let's come in here. And we're not in that object, so we're going to take this object and this object at the exact same time because they're at the same height. And then I'm going to hit Tab. We're going to go click all three of these. Tab. I'm going to do. Oh, it's because you have to mark sharp. Okay. Yeah, hide those. Grab that surface. This surface. Go to front view. GZ. Alt H. And then we're back. Okay. Tab out. Alt H. We got the whole room back. And then we're going to tab into this. We're going to get rid of. All of this potential issue. Tab back. Come in, show this, and then we're going to add we're going to come into these two. Actually, I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to join it into this guy here. By selecting it last, I'm going to Alt J. And this one also has that mirror modifier on it. So, see how this texture mirrors? We don't we don't want that. So after we apply the mirror modifier, we'll go through and fix that. Same with the floor. 
But this is uh, step one. We're going to um, call it a night on this one, and then we'll come back tomorrow. Thanks for joining me in part one. Part two we'll, can start right about now. And we're back. Today we're going to start off with doing some HDR lighting on this. Um, I prefer HDR lighting even though this is going to be in a closed space and HDR lighting won't come in effect but it'll be there while we are trying to make things look realistic. Um, I don't want lamps all over the place not until we start putting torches in. So let's do this. Go to world and change this around from the older versions. Um, you come down to color and do environmental lighting. You used to do it right, like right there. So again, I have polygon texturing. I'm going to pick my HDRs that I got from there. I have this one that I really like. Um, that's weird. My stuff is sorted backwards. Um, regular 3K, you want this EXR. And what that looks like is can't do a screen right. looks like that um another issue i've been having is if i were to rotate this my voice will get choppy so i'm trying not to talk while these things are rendering on the screen but there it is i'm gonna zoom in right now so you can see it as if we're standing in the room So apparently my camera doesn't like it when I do that because it just said I had some issues with my recording. So we're going to try to not do that. And it's kind of bad because we just got started and this is like a bare minimal. But we'll try not to talk. And I got a beefy PC. This is a, got a 10900K processor and it's got a 1080. TI for the Win 3 hybrid EVGA card. It's got 11 gigs of RAM on it. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Maybe it's my sound capturing. But no, my video capturing was doing it too. So we won't be doing that too often. Let's go back to material. All right. So today we were going to, because um, this is day two. Today we are going to work on staircase. So where would I want my staircase? Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and apply this mirror modifier on both these. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because I want to fix this. So this seam right here I want to clear seam um seam over here I don't want this seam and the reason I don't want that seam is because I want to be able to have it just keep going so we're gonna clear seam okay hit a when we're going to come in here and grab Oops, sorry. Shift and click these to unselect them. Then we'll go up to UV and unwrap that. I need to add another seam, apparently. Because see how that went to a circle? Because it is now a bowl with no edge. And um well we have an edge, so but here's the thing. With how I did those boards. You won't ever see the seam. So we're going to mark a seam there. Then I'm going to do an A with a shift click these guys here to deselect them. And then we're going to go UV unwrap. So there it is. This over here, G, oops, why don't you just get this? G, 
move that over just so it's not in my picture. This is the wrong picture up here, but it doesn't matter. Who does it? Um, so we're going to do an R90. And then I'm going to do an L down here. And we're going to scale. I hit A, sorry. L, S. Scale that up until it looks like what the size rock that we want is our wall. Let's zoom into that window, see how that looks. I'm going to pick that line there, hit period so I can zoom in. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks good. Looks good, 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 good. Because now if I do the floor, it's funny, the picture over here updated. And then we're going to do a UV unwrap. If this doesn't unwrap right for you for some reason, I would suggest going to your top view and doing a UV project from view. Because now we get this and then we can scale this up. I can do this and I can also come over here and get this a little bigger. I think it's it's up here somewhere and it might be farther over. One. There's an option in here. Yeah, UV. Pack islands. It will crush it all down and place them inside your texture. But the problem with that is that floor texture is way too huge on the floor, which means I need to go much larger. You know, I'm really not liking this concrete. Pattern repeats too much for me. But to be the right size, you have to be small down there. So let's let's think about this here. Um, I add another texture, and we're gonna call this what we're gonna do new, and this one is gonna be non scene. This, we'll use this on everything that we don't see. Um, so we don't have to look at these big blocky blocks. Blocky little blocks. So I'm going to tab into this. Hit A. Um, let's see, can I shift L to unselect? Yes, I can. Shift L to unselect those. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to assign. Um... So this is basically going to be everything that we're not going to worry about. And yes, I will have to do these. Um, they will be the same as the wall, the same scale and everything. So what I'm going to end up probably doing, and I'm going to put a wood um, frame in there, like what's shown in the picture here. And I'm going to put a concrete windowsill like in that same picture. Okay, so now we need a staircase. So we're going to have a staircase coming up. And yeah, no, that would be kind of cool. I'm just thinking in my head if I wanted to go up another level, but have a catwalk around and have like nothing but books all around the top so you have a cat wooden catwalk is that overkill no i don't think so we got 52 weeks right we'll take this number here which is at 3.6 and twice that would be roughly 7.2 let's go eight eight meters high all right, so one of the things we're going to have to do, we could put some windows up here too if we wanted. Hmm. Let's not put windows up there. It's just going to be bookshelves. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. And we're going to do an L. Let's get, click off. If we didn't click off, that would have been part of my selection. So L. I'm going to go ahead and go UV unwrap. 
And then we're going to scale that bad boy up. So those windows look good. Those walls look good. There we go. Cobblestone walls. They actually look pretty good. It's the same wall pattern I used on my contest image. Okay. Maybe what I should do is have this the staircase and the landing right here and then the next staircase starts here and goes up the wall and then the landing. So we'll do that. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and this. Those guys are together. And we're going to do a shift H. And I missed that, but shift H. Uh, what it does is hides everything other than what you have selected. H hides what you have selected. Shift H hides everything but ex what's selected. So a staircase is, let's say, roughly, I don't know how. But do you know how wide a staircase is? I don't. Hey, Google, what is the width of a standard staircase? 36 inches wide. Right. So I'm going to take, I'm going to select this side over here. I'm going to subdivide it. And then I'm going to take this point here, hover over it, control C. When you hover over and do that, you copy the value of it. Don't click it because then you have to highlight it. If you hover over and do control C, it copies it. And the same with pasting. If I click this one over here, I want, oh, I want this one. Just hover over, control V. There's no need to click and highlight. All right. So I'm going to select that one, which is already selected. And I'm going to select this one over here. Then I'm going to press, press, paste. I'm going to press J. I'll get better at talking as time goes on. I'm for sure. I'm sure of it. Um, that slices that surface in two. Select that one, select that one, subdivide. And then I'm going to look at this Y dimension, right? I'm going to control C that Y dimension. And then I'm going to have to ask Google again a question. So I select that one and then control V. Wait, no. Yeah. Hey, Google, how many meters is 36 inches? 36 inches is 0 0.914 meters. 0 0.914, I think she said. So what we're going to do, get rid of the M. Yeah, get rid of the M. We're going to add 0 0.914. We'll just make it one, one meter. I said one meter is roughly three feet, right? So we'll just do one. And what that's going to do is the math for you. Then I'm going to control C that and then control V. All right, there's my, my opening. So let's just go ahead and delete this. And look, I got edges here. Now we're going to Alt H. All right, so now we have this little guy here. Um, now, just a disclaimer. I don't do everything the best way. I have a CAD style thinking. Um, like I'm going to ask the computer, you know, Google, oh, by the way, before I do that, Hey Google, reduce volume to 50%. Hey Google, what's your current volume? The volume is currently set to 50%. That's better. It was kind of loud before. If I touch her, she, she like goes up in volume. If you tap the top of it. Um, all right. So. Like I was saying, I'm going to do everything to scale. And I, my, the way I approach things is more of automotive design. So apologize if people are like, ah, I'm not doing that. It's just the way I do it. All right. E to extrude Z for my direction. And we're just going to come down as far as we want to come down. And then I'm going to hit F to close it. All right, so this surface here is bottom surface. I don't ever actually need it because you're never going to see it. I'm going to delete those faces. All right, so this would still be brick wall, brick, right? This over here 
we got to think, how thick of a floor would we have? Um, so, do a loop cut, bring, well, that's kind of weird that it went down when I, kind of like flying an airplane. Bring it up. I'm thinking my floor is going to be about that thick. It's going to be a bit, pretty thick floor. We're talking like a whole bunch of people had to move big giant slabs of stone into place. It's, you know, because this didn't happen, you know, in this century. I'm going to grab these edges here. And I'm going to apply a seam. Um, later in this tutorial or series... I'm going to go around and start making things ugly. Um, what I mean by that is I'm going to start breaking corners. That will probably be one whole episode. Just going around and de-beautifying everything. Because nothing is perfect. Not even me. Actually, I'm far from it. But nothing's perfect. At all. Maybe in Fanzia. But other than that, nothing's per perfect. So, we're going to... Hit L on this, and we are going to UV unwrap. Now, it doesn't match. If it does, oh, actually, no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to say if it does, it's wow. What we're going to have to do is unmark this seam here, like this. From here, control over here. Clear seam. Okay, um, and then what we're going to do is another L. See, it didn't do it right that time. Because we need the seam here. Mark seam, and then we're going to do the seam here. Mark seam. Okay, let's see if L works now. Still didn't work. Uh, because I'm in lines, maybe... See, you learn something new every day. So it was selecting everything because I had lines. But if I hit faces, it goes within the seams. Didn't know. I didn't know that's what decided. And see, we're going to learn together. Okay, so let's unwrap that again for the millionth time. And I will probably do this over and over and over again. It's just uh, my workflow. 90 negative because it's on the bottom and then we're going to scale that up until it looks good you know what I'm actually going to pay attention this time to the scale so let's see 18 I need to get a notebook 18 looks good so scale 18 will give us the same scale every time so see now that wall carries down a floor alright so now what we're going to do, <laughs> I just realized I'm going to have to probably, oh no, because the staircase is going to be in the way over here. And maybe I will have to do it again. I don't know. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a Alt-E to screw along normals and get that under, under ledge, like there's a room down there. I mean, I don't think I'm going to make my guy look down the stairs, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I will I will finish texturing it, though, just in case something you can see down there, reflection or something. That, that, that. I'm going to go to top view, and we're going to apply that material. And I probably should unwrap it, too top view no I can't see that button UV unwrap all right Let's see this button this one here that one there and this one here and here, here UV unwrap so that one scaled way up so I want these to you know let scale that up. Doesn't have to be exact. 
All right. Okay, so now we're going to make the stairs. So I'm going to, again, I, I use her a lot. I say her because of the voice. I use Google a lot to give me measurements. So, um, hey Google, what is the average rise over run of a staircase? She didn't hear me. Website, oh. BaltimoreSun.com, they say, on a main stair, the maximum rise should be no more than eight and a quarter inches, and the minimum run should be no less than nine inches. So eight, nine. Okay, so I know that's roughly three feet wide. So what we're going to do is shift a mesh cube GZ. I'm going to just do it up here. Okay, so we know the scale of this thing. We know the dimensions of it. They're right here. So, X is going to be the three feet, three foot, oh, I put that in scale, sorry, three foot, Y is the run, take about the exact measure, it's nine inches, I love that you can type in English and then get metric, or imperial, okay, so, um, and just so you guys know, I use metric all the time at work. But I use metric this big, small. So when you get bigger, I don't know, you know, like I know 104 is four inches, but I don't, is it 104? No. 25.4, 8, 6, so 106, or is it 116? Either way. Four inches is a hundred something. So when you get way big, I just I just don't know my measurements. I know I'm supposed to drop down to centimeters because you just move the decimal place, but still, I don't... my visual distance is done in English, and my small measurements are done in metric. Like if I had to do what a sixteenth of an inch is, I couldn't. But you tell you that that's point one eight seven five. You know, I can do that. 1.875, not point once. Ooh, a ghost. Okay, so my Z dimension is going to be 8 inches. 8.25 inches. Okay, that is one step right there now most places when i say places i mean like most castles from my understanding have wood steps because to put concrete like that or bricks i mean it's too hard so they just build wood Plus, I think if you fell down, it would be a lot more comfortable to fall down on wood. I mean, hard is hard, right? Period on that. Um, did I ever change my view clipping? No, 0 0.001. And is like 10,000. I just put it way up there. I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, but I'm not building outside of this room. And I just want to make sure when I go like this to look at something, I'm not clipping unless my camera's hitting it. All right, so this isn't what we're going to do. So what I say, mean that is I'm going to make it a board. So I have this height of this block. At point two, we're going to make it like a... Well, Let's go with one and a half inch board. So this is actually going to be 1.5 inches. Okay. Now, this. See, it's centered. I don't like that. So I'm going to tab into it. 
GZ. Now here's a measurement I do know. It's 38 something. So 25.4 plus. You know what? I don't know how to do that. Not in this program. I'm going to say times and then. Okay, so this board here, we're going to move this dot down to the bottom. So GZ doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So that's one step. So now what I want to do is I want to array these steps. So candy modifier. I've only used this maybe twice. So bear with me. I'll refresh the course myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a fixed count. The count is going to be it's going to be high because I can go through the floor and I can erase, erase the extras. We won't really see them. So let's go 20. And it says X factor. I'm not going in X. I'm going in the so that's zero. And we're not we're not doing anything gross, not eating any crickets. X Factor, that was a TV show. Uh, let's see, Y is going to be this way. So we're going to go. Oh, my dog wants to visit. Hold on a second. This is my little guy. He's such a cute little Chowini. He sleeps on my desk. So he's right here. Between me and my son. It's his favorite spot. Alright, so he thinks I'm talking to him. Um nine point I think it was just nine, right? Just nine. Which is and then the Z Ooh, it did not like that. Let's try that again. Nine inches. Now why would that work in some places and not others? Alright. So, nine, let's see if I can do this, times 25 point, sorry, I'm trying to look around my microphone, four, all right, divided by 1,000, that's it, right, isn't it 1,000 millimeters in a meter? Enter. And then we're going to make that negative. That might be working. We have to do the same with down. So 8.25. I missed that because I can't see that. 25 times 25.4 times. No, divided by 1000. Zero, 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 zero. Enter. Does that look like they didn't do anything? Maybe I got one too many zeros. I thought this was supposed to be a ray. Oh, it, it is. Okay. I think I might have the decimal place in the wrong spot. I didn't apply scale. Oh, I'm going the wrong way and everything. So Y is not the one I want to move. I want to move zero in that direction. Oops, let's do this. Control C, Control V, zero. All right. So I got the length right, I think. I got everything wrong, don't I? Z, 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 Z. Let's go back to my original. Let's get rid of this. Okay. I'm going to cut that whole section out of the video. Okay. So. Wow. 
Okay. Just thinking. This block right here is not the right size. So Y is three feet. X is nine inches. And Z is 1.5 inches. Okay. Let's move that down to where it goes. And then we're going to go wireframe. G, oh, G. We're going to make it just really close. We're going to go to the top. G, Y. There. Doesn't look like I'm exactly three feet out. Looks like I miscalculated somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to top view again. We're going to line this up close, but we don't want it touching. Because I don't know if you guys have ever seen things clip. They kind of just look like there's an imaginary edge. It's like if I clip it through, there's no shadow. So you gap it because everything in real life, I mean, it's going to have gaps, especially in the 1800s when you're not using, you know, a circular saw. Um, so another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tab out. I'm going to grab this face here. We're going to go match the stairwell instead of matching the um, three foot. So G, Y, and then close, stop. All right. So now we have that step. And then I'm going to do, I want to do an array. But I, like I said, I'm not, let's do this first. We're going to take that. We're going to go object, apply, scale. I think that's a big problem if you don't. Okay, especially with these modifiers. So we're going to go modifier, array. Okay, so. Going into X, one. Oh, so this isn't based on metric. This is based on how many there are. So let's take this up to 12. And then we're going to go in the Z. If I said one, will that put that right down there? If I said negative one. Okay. So this thing is one and a half inches and we want roughly eight inches of height. So that's roughly two goes under four times. Okay. So I'm going to do roughly negative 2.5. Hey Google, what is 8 divided by 2? Or eh. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Hey Google, what is 8 divided by 1.5? 8 divided by 1.5 is approximately 5.33. 5.33. There we go, that looks better. All right. So we're going to go back over to solids and we're going to grab this guy. We're going to GZ that up to be level. 
I must have made it level to the bottom. Let's make it level to the top. Not perfect, right? There. And then I want to put a board down this side here, from there up to here. So I think the best, easiest way to do that would be apply this array. I didn't need to apply the array, but I want each step to look different. So we're going for realism. And if I didn't, if I didn't apply it, then a texture at each board should look the same. That's not what I want. But another reason to not have it textured is because I can do this. Okay, we're going to do a shift H. Okay, we're going to come back in. I can take this line to this line and do an F. See, I have a board that goes all the way down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and grab that line. And we're going to do a GX. Move it forward. Ooh, see? Gotta be careful of that. So we're going to grab that surface. We're going to do a right click and we're going to do a separate by selection. Tab out. Tab into the one that we just separated. Then I'm going to grab that and do a GX forward. This one we're going to do GZ. Nope. We're going to do an E. Z. It's not that easy. No. All right. So when I look at it, I have a board that's down farther and out more forward. And then we're going to take that board, tab back into it. We're going to take it, and then we're going to e to extrude it this way. I'm going to do a and do some math because I know I can't do the inch mark I don't think right here if I said 1.5 inches it doesn't know what I'm doing but if I said divided by 25.4 divided by actually it's not divided by 25.4 okay so let's see 1.5 times 25.4 divided by 1000 enter it didn't give it to me because it must have said, no, we're just going to do that. We're just going to eyeball it. Big fat. One and a half inch board-ish. Right there. All right. Now, I know what you're saying. Draco, you just made that go into the wall. So we're going to take that board and this board, and we're going to join them back together. And then I'm going to take a tab in and do an L. And I'm going to go to top view. And then I'm going to go... Shift D. We're gonna go Y, and then that's and that's where I say I don't know why. I'm gonna click over there, leaving a gap because the boards are loose; they're getting old. All right. So now what we're gonna do is pull the sides in as far as I stretched them out. So we're gonna do a tab out, Alt H, tab back. In. Oh, not tab back in because it tabs into everything. Select that, we're going to tab back in, we're going to go down top view, let's go to wireframe. Alright, in wireframe, we're going to grab edges, sorry my face edges. We're going to come through here, grab all this, and we're going to go G, Y, move it roughly. We want to go beyond line to line, we don't want to be line to line, we don't want to be less than line to line, we want to go past. G Y. There. All right. And then we got our staircase. That was weird. Oh, what we're going to need to do is take these boards up higher and put another one of these up higher. That's not going to be too difficult. Um, kind of should be one right here. So maybe we'll just take, we'll just take this, this board. We'll go G Z. 
up until we get to the top. We'll have to take a look at that from the outside. Remember, we want we want a gap. Tell me the slightest gap. We'll create that shadowing, and we'll go in and we'll break the edges too, make them rounded because bricks are rounded. They're not bricks are not crisp. Back then, I mean, we can make a brick now sharp enough to cut you, but back then, you know, they're using a hammer chisel to make their bricks or they're doing something. They're not molding the bricks. So we're going to come back down here. Go to the zoom there. We're going to do a um, wireframe. And then we're going to grab this stuff here like this. And we're going to go G, C. Um, I know I keep saying don't crash into it, so we're going to back that up. GZ. I'm confused. What am I looking at? Oh, I was looking at the bottom level. GZ. That should be good. Alright, so zoom out, zoom around, take a peek, go back to solids. I think that's a good start. I'm going to render this out, so I'm going to need a camera. So shift A. Let's go with a camera. There's the camera. I always come in here and then I go to view and then I can drive this camera around. Oops, I hit the space bar. That starts my animation. I probably will do some animation on this. This one's going to have to... Okay, so let's use this view for now. Alright, so the thing I just noticed was this board just kind of stops in the middle of the air. So I'm going to grab that bottom and do E to extrude Z and then down. And then I'm going to It'll be hard to unwrap that now. UV unwrap. The reason I said that it's going to be hard to unwrap is because these corner pieces, but I might be able to do this. Get both of those at the same time. Scale. I think it's Y is. Nope. X. Scale X. G X. S X. All right, and then we can come around and grab this side. Six. What I can do too is I can do this. Grab these two, see where they're at. They're right there. And then I can grab these two, see where they're at. I can move those. Uh huh. I know, probably I'm probably looking really intense at it. My screen is wide. Your cam The camera is in the top right corner of my screen, and my screen actually is all the way over here. My camera and my video that I'm looking at is right here of myself, and then over here. If I stretch my screen all the way out, it would be a thin bar across the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I have the option to grab faces and surfaces in here, don't I? No, I do not. Okay. Go down here, grab this point. G, X. Line up with that point. Grab that one. And that one. 
texturing is an art in itself. Um, I just keep playing around with it till it looks to me right. Um, you can't say I don't care what other people think about it, but I do. And sometimes, you know, you just have to go with what you see and what you what you like. See that little bars on the other side. So this whole this whole thing is the wrong direction. See how this lined up and that texture looks pretty good. So we're gonna do that with this one. Let's just pan up. We have that one. And back down. And you want to keep the scale up and down the same because you don't want the texture to shrink. And it's just approximate. I mean, you gotta realize this is just this might not even be in the render. And if it is, it's going by so fast you don't see it. But I want to be able to take any angle, any shot in this and look like so many hours just on that scene which technically they did but just just work on it like the pictures up here i couldn't tell you how many times i changed the angle well maybe not so much on this bottom one because i had to do the layering of the of the um particles i should show that one to you guys too there's a whole bunch of little stones on, in the cracks and it didn't matter if how many I had out farther because you didn't really see them so I had to do a, like a gradient scale for the particles because I didn't want all that computing power for something I'm not using you can see the little alien plus see they're putting that chamfer in that corner you don't see no sharp edge I mean it'll cast a shadow like there's an edge there but there's no sharpness that's how that should look. Okay, I'm going to wrap this first episode up. We're going to go into zero. I'm going to render this out. And All right, that's it for this week. Stay creative. I'll see you next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern.